If you're in the market for an affordable mid-size sedan in America with all-wheel drive, you don't really have too many options in America, but for 2020 and 2021, we're getting two extra options. This Camry all-wheel drive is happening in 2020, and then for 2021, we're also getting the Toyota Avalon all-wheel drive. So as far as mid-size sedans go, that really gives us just three options in America, the Camry, the Altima, and the Legacy, because Ford has canceled the Fusion, although we don't know exactly when it's gonna stop being sold in America. On the outside, there's no visual differentiation between the Camry and the Camry all-wheel drive. And you can get all-wheel drive in basically every trim level of the Camry. So this particular model is the XSE trim with all-wheel drive. It looks basically the same as the front-wheel drive model up front. We have LED headlamps up here. We have a radar sensor behind that total logo and the slightly more aggressive looks that we see in the XSE trim. This is not the first time that Toyota has offered the Camry with all-wheel drive, but it hasn't been offered in America this way in quite some time. And back then, the Camry was notably smaller. The Camry has continued to grow generation over generation, and now, arguably, this is almost a full-size sedan in America. Now, on the downside, we don't have quite as much interior room as we do find in some of the competition, because this generation of the Camry is built on Toyota's TNGA platform, and it doesn't seem to be quite as space efficient on the inside as some of the alternatives out there. So we definitely find a little bit more legroom in some of the competition. If you're trying to decide between the RAV4 all-wheel drive and the new Camry all-wheel drive, one of the big differences is going to be overall ground clearance. We have 5.7 inches of clearance in this model, essentially the same as the front-wheel drive version. Now, the Camry may look a little bit higher from the outside. They did raise the body off the suspension by about 5 millimeters, but that did not affect the overall ground clearance numbers. Meanwhile, in the RAV4 all-wheel drive, you'll find over 8 inches of ground clearance, nearly 9 depending on the version that you're looking at. Oddly enough, Toyota says that the biggest competitor to the all-wheel drive Camry is not the Subaru Legacy, but the all-wheel drive Nissan Altima. That's probably because the Altima sells in much larger numbers than the Subaru Legacy. And oddly enough, the Legacy is a very slow seller in America. But for 2020, they're really going to be your main two options because, again, that Ford Fusion is going away. Now, again, out back, we don't really see much visual differentiation other than this little all-wheel drive logo down there. So you can get the XSC trim with the quad exhaust tips down at the back. It does look terribly sporty for a vehicle that has a 2.5-liter four-cylinder engine right on board. We also have this black lip spoiler right there. And I have to say, I really love this blue paint. However, However, Toyota says that this particular paint color is getting swapped out for a different blue later in the year. So if you want this particular color as you're seeing it today, you'd better order fast. Statistically speaking, about 1% of you out there will be disappointed that there's no V6 under this hood. Toyota tells us that the take rate on the all-wheel drive system should be about 30% or so, and only 6% of shoppers opt for the V6 engine. And that's exactly why we only have a four-cylinder engine under this hood. This engine produces just over 200 horsepower, but interestingly enough, just a tiny bit less horsepower than in the front-wheel drive model. That's likely due to the way that the exhaust has been rearranged to accommodate the all-wheel drive system. If you take a look at the chart on the side of your screen, torque also drops by about one to three pound-feet of torque, depending on the trim that you're looking at. Not too much of a difference overall. For more of you out there, the big deal under this hood is gonna be the traditional eight-speed automatic transmission. No CVT under this hood, like we do find under the hood of Legacy, and of course, the Nissan Altima. If you're looking for all-wheel drive and you don't want a CVT, you really have just about two options. You have this, or you could step up into something like a Kia Stinger, but the Stinger is kinda of, sorta of, not quite the same thing as the Camry. The one disappointment under this hood that I noticed is the fuel economy rating that you see there on your screen. According to the EPA, the all-wheel drive Camry should average between 28 and 29 mpg. That is up to five miles per gallon lower than the regular Camry. It's also, oddly enough, below the RAV4 all-wheel drive. Now at this point, some of you are wondering why isn't the Stinger a competitor to the Camry? Well, the Stinger is quite logically a bit more of a competitor to the Toyota Avalon. It's priced more like a premium entry, not a mainstream entry like the Camry and the Altima. There is a little bit of crossover, just like there is with the Avalon lineup, but a base engine in the Stinger is gonna be more expensive than this Camry right here. You'll also lose some of the features that we see in the Camry at that price point. So you could look at the Stinger as an upgrade over the Camry, but not really as a direct competitor. It is available with all-wheel drive with either the 2.0-liter turbo or the 3.3-liter turbo, but the driving dynamics are gonna be a little bit different as well. Since it is a rear-biased all-wheel drive system, it's also not going to have as much headroom in the rear seats as we find in this model. Hopping into the Camry, obviously we find the same parts as the rest of the Camry lineup. So we still have very comfortable seats for the mid-size stand category, pretty aggressive lumbar support right there a tilt telescopic steering column with a large range of motion. And overall, the interior quality and interior design definitely looks good for this particular segment. I have to say that I like the styling of the Nissan Altima, but this interior is put together with a little bit more precision than we see in that Nissan. 
Toyota says that one change for the Camry all-wheel drive versus the regular Camry is that the cold weather package is standard on all models. So that may change the exact one-to-one -one comparison when it comes to the overall price tag because if you were to add that to your front-wheel drive model and then add all-wheel drive, then it's going to be about $1,500 more. But if you weren't planning on getting the heated steering wheel, heated seats, etc., then it is going to add a little bit more to your price tag. The trunk remains the same size as the front-wheel drive model at just over 15 cubic feet, and under the load floor we still have a spare tire as well. Out on the road, the Camry all-wheel drive drives basically like the four-cylinder Camry, and that makes a lot of sense because not too much weight has been added with this all-wheel drive system. Toyota tells us that just under 180 pounds of curb weight is the difference between an all-wheel drive LE version of the Camry and the front-wheel drive LE version. And because the majority of that weight happens in the back of the vehicle, it doesn't really affect the overall driving dynamics of the Camry, and any real difference going on there is going to be in the positive direction because this should have a slightly more balanced weight distribution than the front-wheel drive version. But again, not a huge difference. In terms of 0-60 to 60 acceleration times, the regular front-wheel drive Camry will do that in 7.9 seconds. This model should be right around 8 to 8.1 because of the added weight. And because we don't really have any tire changes for the all-wheel drive Camry, I expect the overall stopping distance to be essentially the same as well. Of course, the big difference between this and the rest of the Camry lineup is going to be the all-wheel drive traction. We still have the same 5.7 inches of ground clearance as I mentioned before, so no extra ground clearance, but 5.7 is not too bad. There are a decent number of crossovers out there that don't really have much more clearance than this Camry but basically have the same kind of all-wheel drive system. This has been borrowed out of the RAV4 and the Toyota Highlander in essence in terms of the function of operation, but we don't have the axle disconnect feature that we find in the Highlander. The other key difference is that we don't have any traction management knobs or anything going on like that in the center console. No button over here to the left of the driver to completely lock the center coupling. Instead, this is going to rely entirely on the car's computer to tell the all-wheel drive system what to do. So if you're looking for a just plug-and-play kind of all-wheel drive system, that's exactly what the Camry is all about. So logically, this Camry is going to be just as capable in terms of the all-wheel drive system as the average crossover in America, as long as you're not fiddling with the traction management knob in the center console or you're not engaging a lock of the center coupling, things that we cannot do in the Camry at the moment. Now on the downside, the Camry is not available with the V6 engine and all-wheel drive. The big reason for that is that only 6% of Camrys get ordered with the V6 in the first place. Toyota tells us that the take rate for all-wheel drive should be right around 30% or so, so that would mean that a V6 Camry all-wheel drive would represent only about 1% of Camrys out there on the road, and it's just not sustainable to have a separate model for that. So unfortunately, if you're looking for extra power in your all-wheel drive vehicle, you have exactly one option going forward, and that's going to be the turbocharged Subaru Legacy, because you cannot get the Nissan Altima with its 2.0-liter turbo and all-wheel drive, and the Ford Fusion, of course, is going away. Ford has canceled that. It's still on sale at the moment, but it's not going to be on sale going forward. So if you want one, definitely snap it up soon. That will give you a 2.0-liter turbo and a traditional automatic transmission as well. And that is another one of the key differences between the Camry and its two direct rivals going forward, which again would be the Altima and the Subaru Legacy, is that this does not have a continuously variable transmission. This does have their traditional stepped automatic, and you can definitely notice that out on the road. We have paddle shifters on the back of the steering wheel. The shifts feel definitely very crisp compared to something like the Subaru or the Nissan. Both of those use CVTs. And I have to say that in terms of overall power delivery and all-wheel drive function, this is very, very similar to the Nissan Altima. A lot of the same logic was going into programming the all-wheel drive system of both of these vehicles. And that is a little bit different than we see in the Subaru Legacy. The Legacy's all-wheel drive system is a little bit more focused on efficiency, interestingly enough, than what we see in the Camry or even the Nissan. So it's not going to be quite as aggressive at sending power to the rear axle. And there's no full lockup function of Subaru's all-wheel drive system at the moment. You can engage X mode, which makes it more aggressive at sending power to the rear, but it never seems to fully lock the center coupling. And you will see that out in snowy terrain, where if you're driving a Subaru Legacy, you'll notice that there's a bit more front wheel slip going on before power goes to the rear, and you'll notice that, generally speaking, the rear wheels are not going to be spinning quite as fast in some of those situations as the Camry or the Altima. Now, if you want the next level in winter all-wheel drive performance, you're probably going to want extra ground clearance as well. And that's why we don't see some of those features in the Camry all-wheel drive, because those folks are probably going to be shopping for a RAV4 or a Highlander, and then if they're looking for even more within the Toyota envelope, they're going to be going up to a truck or something like the Toyota 4Runner. Remember that we have just under six inches of ground clearance in this vehicle, and in a lot of Toyota's SUV and crossover lineup, we have over eight inches, some of them over nine inches of ground clearance. So if you're looking for that next level in terms of overall clearance, 
that's where you're gonna find it. Bottom line, this is a Camry with all wheel drive. And if that's what you're shopping for, then that's exactly what Toyota is giving you. One thing that's interesting is that Toyota tells us that about 60% of shoppers in some areas of the country are going to be buying this all wheel drive Camry according to their research. And that will mean that in a lot of areas of the country, the Camry all wheel drive is just gonna be the Camry. So if you're looking for something that's all wheel drive, but not a crossover, this is gonna be one of the very few options left in America. Now that said, you will, interestingly enough, get better fuel economy in some versions of the Toyota RAV4. And I would argue that the RAV4 Hybrid is going to be an excellent option for anybody shopping in this category that's interested in fuel economy because 40 miles per gallon with their electric all-wheel drive system, an all-wheel drive system that's a little bit less capable theoretically than this mechanical all-wheel drive system, but not a huge difference, is still pretty impressive. Now I do have to say that the one tricky thing about the Camry all-wheel drive is that the RAV4 all-wheel drive exists and oddly enough you're going to get better fuel economy in that RAV4. It's not going to feel quite as premium on the inside as the Camry. The Camry is designed to be a slightly more up-level vehicle but the RAV4 all-wheel drive is going to be about the same price or perhaps even a little bit less expensive than the Camry and give you interestingly enough better fuel economy and I'm not talking about the hybrid model yet. The hybrid model will obviously give you 40 miles per gallon and has the electric all-wheel drive axle it's not gonna have quite the same kind of traction characteristics as a true mechanical all-wheel drive system, but it's still gonna be fairly good out there in the snow. The electric all-wheel drive system is not gonna be as capable theoretically as a mechanical all-wheel drive system like this, but it is going to give you a serious improvement in terms of overall fuel economy. I would really have liked to have seen that system adapted to the Camry. Let me know what you think about that down there in the comment section. No all-wheel drive vehicle launch would be complete without a snow course. Of course, Toyota has set us one up here and you can really tell that they're pretty aggressive at locking up the center clutch in the Camry and in the Avalon. This definitely feels very similar to the RAV4 and the Highlander when you get it out on more slippery surfaces like this. Now, out on this course, we are running on all season tires and we have the traction control enabled. So Toyota has definitely tweaked the traction control system to deal with this kind of terrain. Now, when we're talking about all wheel drive and snow, remember that all wheel drive is gonna do nothing for you in neutral handling situations. Like this exact moment, we're just, cruising around this course and what's keeping us on the track is the tires and of course the traction stability control system in the vehicle, not the all wheel drive system itself. All wheel drive is gonna come into play when you start adding throttle, start accelerating out of something. It may add a very slight handling benefit, but remember that if you're really driving out on roads that look like this, you should have winter tires on any vehicle out there. As always, it's important to remember that a front wheel drive car with really good winter tires on it will always out handle, out stop, and sometimes even out accelerate an all wheel drive car with all season tires on it. That's very, very important to keep in mind because tires are the important portion of this traction. If you want to get your hands on a Camry all wheel drive, you'll be able to buy these on the dealer lot sometime in April of the 2020 calendar year and this is gonna be a 2020 model year option. If you want an Avalon all-wheel drive, we're told to expect that in the fall of 2020, and that will be a 2021 model year vehicle. We're told to expect the all-wheel drive system to add about $1,500 to the price tag of the Camry, but we don't have official pricing just yet. In general terms, that means that the all-wheel drive system in the Camry is gonna cost you probably a little bit less than the average compact or mid-sized crossover in America, where a lot of folks out there are paying an extra $2,000 to $2,200 for their all-wheel drive option. Now, one thing to know is that you cannot get all-wheel drive in the absolute base trim of the Camry, the L trim. You do have to step up into the LE in order to check that option box. That's probably not gonna be a problem for most people out there because the L is not a terribly popular trim level in the Camry. If on the other hand, you're looking for the absolute best value with all-wheel drive, you may wanna look at something like the Subaru Legacy because all-wheel drive is absolutely standard on that model. So the absolute base trim of that is going to be less expensive than the least expensive all-wheel drive version of the Camry. As always, the main selling points for the Camry are gonna be the fact that it is a Toyota, so it's likely going to have high dependability, high reliability, and of course, we have that eight-speed automatic transmission, not a CVT, like you do find in the Altima and of course, in the Subaru. As always, click that subscribe button down there at the bottom of your screen so you can be updated on all of our latest videos, including a full drive review on this just as soon as we can get it back at home. I'll see you all later.